we are deeply proud of our newest Nobel laureate and the entire MIT economics department. On that note, please join me in welcoming Professor Angrist. I um, was very surprised. I uh, had taken a brief uh, vacation. I was trying to squeeze one day of uh, the last day of the sailing season in down on the Cape. So I wasn't really focused on this uh, down on Cape Cod. And uh, I got up early uh, by chance and I looked at my phone. I saw there were some text messages. Initially, I wasn't paying much attention. And then I saw there were a lot of text messages and I realized I better wake up and pay attention. I had missed the call from Sweden because uh, it was already about 6 a.m. East Coast time. Uh, but luckily I have so many uh, friends and colleagues that have won Nobel prizes that I was able to get the phone number for the Nobel committee from uh, a colleague, Bengt Holmstrom. And, uh, and so I called them. And, uh, and initially they didn't take my call. Eventually I found the right person. <laughs> I did have sort of a winding road. I wasn't a precocious high school student. Uh, I left high school early and uh, uh, went to work for a while before I decided I really probably should go to college. Uh, and then I had kind of a false start in graduate study at Hebrew University. Uh, it wasn't their fault, it was mine. Uh, eventually things uh, worked out and I ended up uh, doing my PhD, uh, getting my BA at Oberlin and doing my PhD at Princeton. The kind of methodological work that, that Hito Embens and I um, focused on uh, over 30 years ago, we started thinking about this, is uh, how to come up with strategies that provide evidence that's as good as the evidence that you would get if you were able to run a randomized trial for something like the effects of charter attendance. And we built, a, uh, initially, uh, we had sort of an idea, and then that became a framework uh, for the use of statistical and econometric methods that mimic uh, uh, the sort of research design that you would get in a clinical trial without actually having to do the trial. Now, you can't always do that, but often you can do that using natural variation. We use the fact that people born in different seasons of the year, as we called it, they're really quarters of the year, enter school at different ages. These are small differences in age, but if you're born late in the year, you enter school a little younger. And that means that compulsory attendance laws will keep you in school a little longer before your 16th birthday where you're, when you're allowed to drop out. And that variation in quarter of birth, which works through the interaction of compulsory attendance laws and age at school entry laws, uh, that kind of echoes into people's schooling and then eventually their earnings. So Alan and I used that experiment to uh, experiment in quotes, natural experiment, to estimate the economic returns to schooling. So that, that's a favorite. What am I most excited about? I'm very excited about the line of work that Parag and I have, Parag Pathak and I have been pursuing on schools and uh, how to exploit uh, large urban districts admission processes. So uh, many large urban districts in the United States today have a centralized admissions process. Boston is a leading example. New York has something like this, Chicago, Denver, New Orleans, where kids can apply to any school in the city and then there's a kind of a matching process that goes on. And there are many aspects of this that are just fascinating. First of all, the match itself is uh, economics come to life. It's the solution to a kind of a game theory problem about how to produce stable, satisfying matches, which make everybody on both sides happy. It's just, uh, it's just the greatest honor uh, uh, a person could have. Uh, it's, a, it's a high point of my life. Come here, Bella Boo. 
Come here, come here, come here. I'll put you up and let you see everybody on Zoom. Here we go. Yeah, there's, we only see Kimberly and Marty. Say hi. <laughs> the the world Tov. sees you, Bella. <laughs> Boker Tov. That's my granddaughter. And I'm very proud of her. And I have a newborn grandson. 